<laughs> Good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Annika. My husband is Keith. He is the lead elder from Victory Church. Um, uh, he's currently in Australia. He's doing some ministry there. And then he will be back next Wednesday, which uh, they say, what? Uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's true. I, I mean, I liked him before, but goodness, he can come back now. <laughs> Um, it's my honor and privilege to share the message with you all this morning. Um, Trish asked me a couple of weeks ago if I'd be prepared to share the message. And, I mean, I just had to say yes. It was compelling to say yes. And she asked me, what is it about Christ or about God that has stood out for you over the last season in your life? What is God busy doing? And it's this... It, it was without thinking the steadfastness of Christ that through the chaos and the, I mean, if we look at the world around us, it can be quite daunting um, because the world's going crazy more than, I don't know, ever before. Maybe I'm just noticing it more, but the, the world is so up and down in Demokar, but in Christ, in Christ alone, we are secure, we are safe. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and there's absolutely nothing in this world that can shake him or compare to him. I have a, amen, hallelujah. Um, <laughs> there's a piece that I'd like to read to you guys that I wrote out when I was thinking about who is this Christ, this Jesus that we serve. So if you would, you can close your eyes if you want to um, and just, yeah, his name is Jesus. He is immovable, unshakable, unchangeable. He is without beginning. He is without end. He is our foundation. He is perfection. There is absolutely no space for improvement in his character or in his actions. He is all that he says he is. He is the son of God. He is the image of God. He is the radiance of the glory of God. He is the firstborn of all creation. God created the world through him and made a way to redeem the world by him. Everything exists for him. There is no other. He is the author. He is the finisher. He sustains the universe by the word of his power. He is lovely. He is gentle. He is kind. He is fierce. His strength has no end. He is the only way to the Father. His life shines forth light that pierces every darkness. His beauty and his power is beyond our understanding, and his ways are beyond our comprehension. There is no one like him. Nothing can compare to him. His splendor is more than what our eyes can handle. The fullness of his glory is overwhelming. He is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. He is without rival. He is the one who has overcome the world. For millennia, people have songs, sung songs about his glory, and we will keep on singing until he comes again, because there is no one like our Jesus. And guess what? He loves us. He chose us. He knows us by name. The creator of the universe thought of you and me when he created us. He purposefully put us together, each and every one of us. We are here today because of him and him alone. He knows the hair on our heads and the thoughts of our hearts. His love for us is genuine. He is all that we could ever want or need. The Lord of heaven and earth knows you and loves you. In him we have purpose, in him we have security, in him we have everlasting peace. He is our fortress, he is our safe place, he is our haven in the storm, our hiding place. Our greatest joy is found in him. He is utterly trustworthy and completely unshakable. He is unwavering in his love for us and unfailing in his passion for the glory of his Father. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb who was slain. To receive glory and honor and power and strength be unto him forever and ever. Amen. He is the king. His name is Jesus. And he is all that he says he is. And he has called you by name. Oh, oh God is good. Yes. Let's give God an offering because he is who he says he is. Isn't it amazing that we can know this God, this God that is so far beyond what we can comprehend or grab a hold of, but he is God. Let's look at some, at some scripture about uh, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. I'm just quickly going to touch on a few scriptures. There's so many scriptures. Have you ladies ever tried to pick a few scriptures out? Like, it's so hard. Like, the Bible is so cool. I just love all of it. Um, Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are the work of your hands. He made us. Like, Imagine a potter sitting with clay and he's like molding, shaping, forming. That is who God is to us all the time. Every single day, our everyday ordinary life that we submit and surrender to him, he makes us, he molds us. Romans 9 verse 20 to 21, Eliza Skisak is fanachop, yeah. Who in the world do you think you are to second guess God? How can we ever, because he's holy, he's the creator, Do you for one moment suppose that any one of us knows enough to call God into question? Clay doesn't talk back to the fingers that mold it, saying, why did you shape me like this? Isn't it obvious that the potter, isn't it obvious, isn't it obvious that the potter has the perfect right to shape a lump of clay into a vase for holding flowers? Wouldn't we all like to be a vase that holds flowers? Or into a pot for cooking beans? Imagine we were all vases, then how would we eat? Nobody could eat. He created us in his image. He knows what he is doing. He made us male and female. He purposefully made each and every one of us sitting here as a woman of God. He sets the order. He sets the structure. When he tells us to do something, it's for our good. When he says don't do it, it's to protect us. He put structures in place for our good. We don't know everything. We trust that he does. God is the God of the universe. He spoke and the world was created. He is the ultimate authority of life. He's the reason that we can breathe. Outside of him, there's nothing. So my question to you today is, do we live every day with this full, complete, utter knowledge and belief and trust in God? Do we? Or do we sometimes take our focus off and we look at something in the floor you can trip over. We look at the end, but whatever. People always say, cut me off on the way to church. I don't know why. So I'm just saying that. as well. I don't know, People always use that as an example. Like, nobody cut me off on the way to church driving. But anyway, I'm driving Keith's Fortuna. It's so cool. Yes, it's a work. Anyway, I have to give it back next week. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> do I? Do I really? Hmm. <laughs> um, but do we, do we live our everyday life? Like, do you wake up every morning and think of how amazing our God is? All I have today in this message to offer you is remember Jesus. Remember who he is. Remember how great he is. Remember the price that he paid. Remember, just put him in his rightful place in your mind, in your thought, in your heart. That is, that is my plea to you. I have this... Um, um, when I was at, in school, Kitev Marcel on Dani. That's my mom. She's cool. Um, <laughs> I'm so blessed. Um, I'm so blessed. With Keith being away for the last two weeks, I've just realized how incredibly blessed we are. Uh, Wyatt, my boy, Keith, is five. He's got his Oma and his Opa here. He's got his granny and his granddad here, and he just absolutely loves going to them. He's got Cristal and her children, which he's adopted as family. And he just, he's got so many people. We, we are incredibly blessed to have family and, and church family around us. Don't take it for granted. Yo. But anyway, so when I was at school, I used to have this so geel, deerskynende spijskuis, and that more. Spice case, and they have a spice case where you pin it and you put all your stuff in there. And somewhere along the line, um, somebody came to speak at the school and they gave out these little cards. Jesus will number one in your life. It was like printed on blue, black on blue paper. And I stuck it in my space case. And I was like, Jesus will number one in my life. And the one day, this other kid asked me about it. And he's like, No, man, my Jesus is my number one in your life. And I just, as I was preparing this message, I remember at that moment thinking, I want to say yes, but I don't think I can. And that's the question I want to ask you today is, can you confidently say yes? Is God in his rightful place in your heart and in your mind, in your everyday, ordinary life? Is he? 
Psalm 8, verse 3 to 4. When I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. And yet you do so, so, so very much. God the Son. So I spoke about God the Father, just a snippet of God the Father. God the Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. He's our perfect older brother. You guys remember the story of the prodigal son? The younger son sold all his stuff and he went off and made a whole lot of nonsense. And the older brother, when the younger son came back, the older brother was dissatisfied. He was like, Ugh. like, why are you giving the fattened calf to this younger brother who has gone and, and wasted all your money and all of that? And I just realized that in Jesus, we have the perfect older brother. We have the one who welcomes us back. He opens his arms. He made the way. He was the sacrifice to welcome us back into the fold of God. Romans 8 verse 34. Who then can condemn us or will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Pleading for us. On our behalf, he is asking the Father, and he's interceding for us to make a way for us so that we can live in this freedom that he paid for. We have an advocate for, with the Father. He intercedes for us. The one through whom the world was created is pleading on our behalf. He is our perfect example. He can relate to us in every way, and yet he remains perfect, perfect in every way, like the song we were singing, you are perfect in every way. You are perfect in every way. And I just love how songs are still being written about God. We haven't run out of lyrics. Uh, we haven't run out of melodies. We haven't ru uh, run out of things to say. We, we will <laughs> forever be able to keep on singing about how great and how good our God is. And he sends us his Holy Spirit, our guide, our helper. We are never alone because the Spirit of God is with us to lead us and guide us. We cannot live this life by our own power. We cannot do it by our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit. We cannot see God for who he is without the Holy Spirit revealing him to us. And what does he say? <laughs> how do we get the Holy Spirit? How do we, how do we, how do we have more? We ask. Ask and you will receive. Knock and it will be opened for you. That's it. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's coming to God in, in submission, in love, and humbly asking. And he will give. Why? Because he is a good, good father. That is who he is. Ooh, ooh, another question. Are, are we walking by the Spirit of God? Like I was asking Nana, is God in the rightful place in our heart and our mind every day. And we, this is why we need this. We need to encourage one another. I need to be encouraged. All of us need to be encouraged all the time. That is why we have each other. That's the beauty of being the body. So are we walking by the Spirit? And there's, it's so easy to test that. It's what's the fruit of the Spirit? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, gentleness, and self-control. Are we living by that? If you're not, come, come. All you need to do is go and ask. That's it. It's not hard. Just, just go to God. Ask him, oh, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Help me, please. Can, can, can you give me your Holy Spirit? And he will, because that is who God is. John 14, verse 15 to 17 and verse 26. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's not hard. It's just hard work. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the spirit of Christ, it's his spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Oh, this is so cool. In you. Verse 26, but the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. All things he will teach us, and he will remind you of all that I said to you. We have everything that we need in God, God the Father, God the Son, 
God the Spirit. He made the way. He paid the price. He provides. He gives. He leads. He guides. He teaches. It's in him. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, I chose a different translation because we always say, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. But I just chose a different one because so we can remember what it means. We know what it means, but so we can remember what it means. And it says, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. Babala, babala. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit. Not by might, not by power, not by force, not by strength, not by self-effort, not by trying harder, not by working harder, but by the spirit of the Lord. Says the Lord of heaven's armies. Says the Lord of heaven's armies. That is who he is. <laughs> I made a little note here and said, trying to live on our own strength can feel like playing uh, tennis. Tennis. Everybody, anybody play tennis before? Playing tennis with a ping pong ball, né? in gale force winds. I got this, Lord. Watch me. <laughs> what? What can you do? What can you accomplish? Nothing without him. Jesus, our hope, our anchor. Hebrews 6, verse 17 to 20. Now, oh, this is the promise of God. This is so cool. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge, we who have fled to him for refuge, we should be fleeing to him for refuge, can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He made the way. This hope in Jesus, this hope Jesus, is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Imagine which is very easy to do, actually. Imagine your soul is like a little boat in the middle of a ridiculous storm, and the anchor is Jesus. Then we can do this thing, right? We can do it when our anchor is Jesus. But when we're on our own, what's going to happen? You're going to go here, there, and everywhere, onas de boe, and any water. His name is Jesus. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 to 6. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, it's usually necessary, you have been grieved by various, various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is the prayer in my heart for us today, that we will anew and afresh like fresh bread from heaven, we'll have this revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus made the way by his death and resurrection. We can now be one with him and him and the Father. And we too can enter the inner sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, with him in the love of the Father. Like that uh, in John 15, that scripture about um, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Only in him there's life. Outside of him, there's nothing. It's like the the taki. There's nothing. Isaiah 26 verse 3. God's promises are so, so amazing. You will keep in perfect and constant peace. Now listen to the promise of this, hey? You will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you, in both inclination and character. 
because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. We can have confident expectation in God because he is who he says he is. Trust confidently that the Lord forever, (laughs) he is your fortress, your shield, your banner. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock, the rock of ages. Hmm. That's very cool. Then I have a, a little caution here for us. And that is knowledge versus revelation. Who of us have read our Bibles? Me? All of us, right? Who of us think that we might be deceived about anything in our lives? Is it possible? The, the premise of being deceived is that you don't know. <laughs> um, and that's why it's so important to allow godly people around you to speak into your life and to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Because if you're deceived, you're deceived. You don't know it. <laughs> um, but we all want, we all want the fullness of Jesus Christ. We all want to live in this freedom, in this incredible way that he made for us. But part of that is, is family, is, is people, is um, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Um, just on this, ah, oh, sorry. We may know many things, but do not be deceived. What you know may not be correct. Or if it is, if it is, we might not be living it. It's important that we, we remain humble in the sake for myself as much as for anybody else. Let us not get caught being lukewarm. In Revelations, the Spirit speaks to the churches when he says, you look, you lukewarm, God will spit you out. That's a scary thought. I don't want to be lukewarm. No, thank you. And then when he speaks um, to, the, to the ten virgins with their oil in their lamps, I don't want to be asleep and not have oil in my lamp. Nay. No? He calls us, he sustains us, and our hope is secure in him. Eliza, can you give me my first drink? I took a few pictures because of, I don't know, all of us are different, and I was just trusting God that he will speak to us in different ways. But the, the revelation of the steadfastness of Christ and how secure he is, like that, that is, that is just the, the chain that is connected to the anchor. Next. And look at that, mountains, eh? The same, not changing. Next. Strength in the middle of a storm, a safe place. A fortress, a place we can run into and take refuge. What better place to be than with your hand in the hand of the Father? So the next part, knowing who God is, a fresh revelation of him. We come to this wonderful word that we all maybe love to hate. I don't know. Submission. Submission to God. Why? Why? Because of who he is. Because he is the potter. We are the clay. How can the clay ever tell the potter what to do? It it's, it's, doesn't make any sense. So the word submit means to willingly, willingly, to willingly come under the authority of another. Submission is not, it's not rebellion. It's not defiance. Have you ever... Uh, Anybody that's had kids has probably had this happen. If you tell like a, a little person what to do, I'm joking, quiet. Um, if you tell a little person what to do, he can give you this like, <clears throat> like, you know, I don't want to do it, but okay, fine, I'm going to do it. Or no, I won't do it. Or, and aren't we like that with God sometimes? God tells us to do something, you're like, Mm. Or you have this like back and forth, like talking yourself out of it or convincing yourself it's not really what he said. Or, hey, don't we do that? <laughs> so, I, I, you know, like, I don't think I'm rebellious or defiant. But what about grumbling obedience? Ever heard of that one? Like you do it, but you don't really want to, but you do it anyway. 
Miserable obedience. Ha <laughs> ha. My own notes are funny. Um, what is... <laughs> Thank you, Yolandi. So, listen, wait, wait. What is, listen to this. What is grumbling? Faithless complaining. Grumbling directly or indirectly declares that God is not sufficiently good. Faithful, loving, wise, powerful, or competent. Ouch. Philippians 2, verse 14 to 15. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may be blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. They even had warped and crooked generations then. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Isn't that what we want? We want to shine Jesus' light to the world around us. So we should stop complaining. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so how should we submit? We humbly submit to God. We, this is why I started with, with who he is, because for me, that's how I work in any way. When I have this revelation of who God is, like I submit right there. There's no. But when you, when you, in your mind and in your thoughts, become so consumed with what I want or with what I think I need or with what I want to do or how I thought my life should look, then it's very hard to submit. And then will I must not do what I will do. And yeah, Keith is going to be to say that that does happen. <laughs> um, when I thought about what sh- submission should be, submission, I mean, we've all heard this word, we all know what it means. But to me, it's submission of your heart. It's not just in action, but that your heart is surrendered and that your heart is devoted to him, to this Jesus who is so incredible. And um, I thought of uh, John 12, verse 3, where Mary pours out the oil on the feet of Jesus. And to me, that is such a beautiful picture of, of submission because she's just so overcome with who he is. He could ask her to do anything in the world and she would do it without thinking because you you see him you see him for who he is then it's then it's easy to submit and who is our greatest example of submission is Christ Christ wanted to please the father above his own will and far above his own comfort Be of one mind and one spirit. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In humility, value others above yourself, looking to the interest of others. And then in Philippians 2, verse 6 to 8, it says, talking about Christ, who being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Submission comes with promise and protection. James 4 verse 6 says, but he gives more grace. It says, God opposes the power, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. It's a promise. That's, that's the promise of God. So ending off, because I don't... Oop, I get the timer begin and it's going to be so. It's all 27 minutes. Um, in ending off, as encouragement for us, God positions us with purpose and with power. He positions us as his daughters. He called us by name. We are his. We belong to him. We are in the family of God. Nothing, nothing can change that. 1 John 5 is 4 to 5. For everyone, and this is us, who has been born of God, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? It is vital that we are secure in our salvation, that we can confidently know that we are his, we are his daughter, his daughters. 1 John 10 verse 28, 29. He says, I gave them eternal life and and they will never perish. This is my favorite line. No one can snatch them away from me. 
For my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. And this is the part in the word where it was speaking about uh, the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy, but that Jesus is the good shepherd, and his sheep knows his voice. That's us. We know his voice. We follow him. So he gives us position. we daughters of God. He gives us purpose to do the will of God. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey me. Do not grow weary of doing good. There is such purpose in Christ. We have a privilege to be called sons and daughters of the Most High King. And as he had great purpose for his son, Jesus, on this earth, Jesus came here with work to do. He didn't come here to just have a comfortable life. He came here with work to do. God gave him purpose. So we, as his adopted sons and daughters, have great purpose, has great purpose in him. God legitimizes our sonship by entrusting us with the meaningful work of the kingdom of God. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow dull. Let us run the race with endurance. Run to win. (laughs) 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. Instead, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. He entrusts us with the gospel, not in order to please God, to please men, but to please God who examines our hearts. Matthew five fourteen to 16. You are the light of the world. A, set, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good, de- your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everybody will praise your Father in heaven. And he gives us power by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living in us. Go, make disciples, teach, love one another. 1 John 5, verse 4 to 5. Being born of God is the source of victory, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Romans 8, verse 11 says, The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Hey, our God is incredible. 